today is going to be pretty informal because, um, you know, there aren't that many of us. And, uh, uh, you know, I want to go kind of both directions. Like if, you know, I'm sure we probably have some questions for you, but I would love to hear any questions you have for us of, you know, things that you're trying to figure out uh, how to set up. And there's yeah. Tanache. Um, so to start, I'm going to just go through, um, I went through yesterday through the GitHub to figure out what had changed since we presented each week. Yeah. And so I'm going to walk through that real quick. All right. So let cool. me. I just want to start off by saying uh, thank you to, to all of you. Like your, <laughs> your feedback here has been incredibly helpful. I, I haven't had a chance to watch the videos of this, the chapters after chapter one, uh, but I absolutely will when I get back to revising them because, uh, you know, seeing you all talk through the the chapters and the seconds has just been incredibly helpful. And, you know, uh, I know everything's in a little bit of a rough state right now, so I really <laughs> appreciate you all like slogging through it. And, uh, you know, the feedback is really, really helpful. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And I love how, you know, responsive you've been. It's been interesting to see some things change um it's either right behind us or right ahead of us <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm trying to stay ahead but uh <laughs> <laughs> so, I feel like no, I'm, I'm so i guess um that is my first question i guess before we start going through what has changed of uh, what is your timeline as much as you have one yeah um, so the book was due to my publisher in June, so that's, uh, not happening, <laughs> uh, th but they're, they're fine with that. You know, I don't have a strict deadline. What, what I'm really trying to do is just to keep moving along. And as long as I keep moving <laughs> along, it'll be okay. Um, you know, right now the structure of the book is basically intact and I don't expect it to change meaningfully from what it is. Where I am now is I'm sort of going through and rewriting each chapter, working on polishing them, making them read better, making them sort of, you know, actually make sense from a writing. <laughs> there are definitely some places here where like I've written paragraphs that are just like sort of gesturing at ideas as opposed to actually <laughs> explaining them. And I'm trying to, as I said, trying to stay ahead of you all and clean those up a little bit. Um, so, you know, working on, on that, um, I don't have a like actual timeline. Uh, I will be very sad if I'm not like onto the sort of publishing part as opposed to the like writing part by like <laughs> the spring, right? Like okay, early spring, I would really love to be sort of feel like I'm sort of at a, at a good stopping point on the writing. Um, but, uh, uh. I, okay. I said that about starting 2023, so <laughs> we'll see. All right. Well, I mean, for the most part, you have uh, stayed ahead of us. So that leads well into looking into um, what I saw had changed. Yeah. So, you know, the first thing that I have loaded up here um, is you, know, you updated the what's in this book, including you talked about the portfolio exercises, which weren't there uh, yeah, when we started, and those have been really great. But it's funny because, like, they build off of one another to a right. degree. Uh, um, yeah. Not necessarily all of them, but some of them do. And so we didn't do the first ones, and so um, that's definitely hard something to, that I'm working on now is going back to uh, yeah. Section sure two finish. is pretty heavy on the labs, and those those are all done. Like you should be able to start right off in section two. And those, those, I don't think will change much. Excellent. Um, yeah. Well, actually one of the, one of the big questions I, we, we can get there. One of the big questions I have for you going forward is like, what are the kinds of things you want to pra get practice setting up? Because <laughs> there are a lot of options. Yeah. Um, I think so. I mean, again, we'll get to it as we get to it, but yeah. the, the, um, the plumber section, um, it's not as easy to get up and running with a real plumber API as it is for like a shiny app, you know, there's shiny apps.io for a free uh, playing around and learning how to do it equivalent there. It, um, like you can do it with the various, you know, Amazon or, or uh, Google or um, yeah. Azure, but it's not as uh, like as cut and dry. 
Yeah. But I suspect that we'll be seeing some of that in uh, section two. Uh, that would definitely be something that I want to get okay. better at being able to do is setting up an, an actual API, okay. not just on, on my laptop. Um, which I've been like, you know, I've done versions of it, but uh, having a way, especially, you know, ulterior motive, I want to do things for R4DS uh, sure. that like right now I have uh, uh, monolith apps that could be hitting APIs. So um, getting that sorted out would be nice. Uh, I don't know, does anyone else have anything in particular that they're looking to be able to do? Um, I think I would just like to second the, the plumber implementation. I think like one of the things that was really um, great was, you know, the most recent RStudioConf um, where, you know, they were really going at Vetiver and really pushing for, you know, how lovely it was and how, you know, great it's going to be for our users. And, you know, the first thing that you want to do, obviously, is try it out with, you know, take out your empty cars and do something with it. Um, so I think like one of the one of the things that's a little misleading in the the vetiver um, documentation is what we're doing here. Like the vetiver documentation and, you know, intro looks great, but it doesn't really say much about like where you should be doing it as opposed right. to just like sitting in your laptop and i feel like that's, this that's a really interesting idea perfect place for that. yeah I, I hadn't thought about actually using vetiver here but maybe maybe i should just do that because vetiver will write you a docker file or whatever so we could just be like let's let's take vetiver let's take one of those docker files and let's like put it up somewhere for real um right. use we could put it on yeah so so another question along those lines is how um how diy would you want that to be <laughs> right like because because as I get into a lot in like the next section that y'all are going to read, like a huge, like there are just like layers of services on services on services, right? So like if right. we want to, if you want to get practice running a container in the cloud, like we could just put that container on a server and you could run it. And then we just got to work out the networking to get to it. Or we could put it in something like um, ECR or Elastic Beanstalk or even Lambda to get exposure to like some of those like cloud services. And so I guess I'm curious whether like it's more interesting to you all to be like, I want to do this like really the like from scratch way or whether you're more interested in getting exposure to some of those like services that you can use, which are, they're, you know, a little more expensive, but they're also like, you know, a lot of people are using them. And and so being able to say that you've used them is also really valuable. And I'm, I'm curious like which way you all sort of <laughs> those things. It's, when I started this book, um, my exact use case was definitely like deploying to something like Lambda. Mm. Um, I am not at that company anymore, so I am uh, less certain about what, but, but something like Lambda is actually a good example of it can be it, like it, it scales. It, it goes from, you know, nothing like you're just doing little, you know, hitting it once a week kind of, you know, it doesn't really cost anything at that point Two, you can be running a zillion of them, you know, and, yeah. and, um, and you get to the point where Lambda is maybe not the right answer anymore. Right. Um, which is to say, I don't, I'm not, I don't know. Like I want to be able to deploy things um, for my own projects. So um, like, the the uh, here's how to make things work on a budget kind of uh, approach is uh, definitely something that I would want out of this. Um, but presumably, I will be working somewhere, you know, at some point relatively soon where there are other people to deal with the heavy lifting side of things. So I don't know, I guess is <laughs> my meandering way of saying. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, I like the idea of working with Lambda. Um, I know it has a lot of challenges versus um, working with or dealing with that with Plumber 
Like I have never, I, I've deployed things on Lambda, but not using Plumber. Yeah, I'm I not think sure. Lambda would run an arbitrary container, which would probably just be the way it's to do it. It's semi-arbitrary container because it has yeah. to use their Linux, which is a little. Uh, Amazon uh, Linux too. Limited. Yeah. Got it. Um, and um, anyway, there are some constraints, but yeah, seeing like, seeing how to do that would be something I would like to see. And then, I don't know, understanding the um, landscape to a degree. Now I know, you know, like there are 14 things on AWS that you can use for deploying <laughs> machine learning models. And then every other service has something equivalent. So you can't, presumably you can't give us the whole landscape, but a high level. Yeah. Um, well, how, how, about, how about this? Like, you know, I, I feel like John, you've mentioned two actually very specific use cases. You've mentioned the fact that you're sitting on your laptop that might be like anything from a MacBook Air 2015 to the latest, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, but the point is you're sitting on your laptop. That's one use case where I think like this book does essentially cover. Um, and then there's a second use case where you're now a working professional who has you know, some sort of product that they're trying to cater for their company or for a client or something. I feel like those are two very specific use cases that this book could help communicate really well. Um, the idea of like, I'm a student, uh, this is my first time thinking about data science at all. You know, I'm just going through this book to see if this is gonna be my career and I can do it for peanuts. You know, I can do it for yeah. nothing. But I, I really like that. Like, is, sort of like that. both the like, here's the DIY cheapo version. And then here's the slightly more real version that you might do <laughs> if you were actually like a professional doing this. Right. And that might, that might require more work and writing on your end. <laughs> um, but as, but we're happy to help obviously. Um, yeah. But those, though, I feel like I've mentioned this in one of our other meetings, actually. I feel like one of the things that's really difficult about data science is that there are so many, there are so many intro blog posts that just stop at the point of like, yeah, you built a model or yeah, you have a plot. Like people are really, really hungry, I feel like for the next step. And the problem is that the next step either exists like after you've gotten into a PhD program or after you've gotten the job, which is like, that, that's not helpful. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I was gonna try and say something similar, but phrase it as a question is like, is the target audience like someone who's like brand new or is it someone who's maybe had a little bit of time in data science and then is trying to figure out like how to like evolve their skill set? Because similarly, like I was thinking like, like I presented the Docker chapter and like I I have a server at home where I'm running like a <laughs> Kubernetes cluster and like it's so, like setting up a Docker container is like okay cool but like what do I do like I have this R Studio Docker container I'm like okay but like what now like if I wanted to add like Python to it like how do I do that and like sort of like getting like the like the second step on all of these things so like similarly with like vetiver like okay like i can set up like i can follow the vetiver tutorial and set up a little like model like how do i make it all play nice together yeah i think maybe like the best way to phrase it is like what's next after <laughs> the tutorials because yeah. i think that's what everybody really want i think that's what this book really is is about right um so generally yeah. that's where i would i would say okay like they try to specify like one or two use cases like the student and you know somebody who's never like gotten because like everybody can open ssh on their laptop right but not many people can go to a cluster so maybe it's it would be useful to be like, okay, well, if you can't go to a cluster, here's how you can pretend, set up a Docker container. 
you know, something like that. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. I'll, I'll be really interested to see what you all think of the next section. You know, like sort of in, in my mind, section one is really focused at the data scientist who wants to figure out how to sort of like upgrade what they're doing right and <laughs> and about data science side of it but move more like move their dev more in closer to, to ops right like like but really coming from the dev side the second section right now is really about ops and it's really about how you as a data scientist and it's interesting right now it's mostly focused on the use case of having to run a workbench environment, right? So like in, in section two, the, the thing that we really get into is like hosting our studio server and Jupyter Hub on an EC2 instance. Like that's that's sort of the big example I'm going at there. And, and one of the big questions on my mind and, and what what you all are, are sort of pointing out, which is interesting is like, I've been wondering like, should I be really going for like hosting a Shiny app or a Plumber API instead of, you know, uh, uh, the, the sort of workbench environment? And it sounds like maybe. Or maybe also. I, I think uh, uh, it also is likely the uh, the path. Um, but yeah, I, I think like this first section has been really good for um, like leveling up the reproducibility of what you're doing. Um, okay. So the you know the yes, you're an individual, but make sure that when you hand it to someone, it's easy for them to do the same thing because. You know, if you're doing it in a container, then they can have exactly your environment or almost exactly like you talk about, you know, sometimes the hardware makes a difference, but otherwise it's exactly the same environment. Yeah. Um, and so, but yeah, being, I, I, I do think like one of the main things um, that I was struggling with slash a little bit, you know, fighting for is, okay, I made this thing. Now let me make it usable to people who are not on my laptop um right so you know do, like ml ops basically um so right. and yeah. that was one of the theses right at the beginning of the that was one of the theses that you presented it's like okay you're you're great at r but <laughs> nobody else cares <laughs> right yeah right yeah yeah i have i just have a question uh a continuation to what Gus said uh, at chapter five, we I think we we did like a basic stuff on uh, on container and and con con to continue just the discussion. What what is the next step? Because um, like thinking how to manage different container at the same time, the networking, the the ports, all this kind of stuff to create some kind of multi stage. Uh, I think this is, you could you could uh, like uh, set up a multi-stage environment uh, in Docker Lite, and uh, one for example like uh, a testing environment and or, or uh, a production environment and testing environment and development environment. You could replicate that all all together in in your local machine. Is this kind of um, like uh, this all those kind of environment are are they or uh, uh, used in in real world or or uh, it doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, people have a lot of different ways they they execute these kinds of things. Um, you know, I think the the kind of the level of complexity that you're talking about there, I pretty much shy away from in this. Like my my, <laughs> I'm sort of at that point. Like you know, you should really be working with a professional IT admin if you're looking at that level of complexity. And so I think like I am unlikely to be able to address. Like there's a lot of complexity there, and I like at that level, I I really think like either you're becoming a professional IT admin and you should <laughs> read other books on all those topics or. Um, you should be working with one, right? And, and so the, the the audience I'm really targeting is people who have sort of relatively simple IT and administrative needs and want to enhance the reproducibility. Want to like I'm thinking about myself from you know my a few jobs before now, right? Like I was working on a team of six data scientists 
and was running our studio server for the five or six of us and like would have loved to have a resource that helped me understand <laughs> what I was doing. And so like that's sort of my target audience here. I think I think also like the target audience of somebody who's like, oh, I need to host a Shiny app. I need to host a Plumber API. How do I do that? I don't want to pay for, for Posit Connect, uh, but I want to you know do that in a sensible way. Like I think that's a that's a really great use case. The level I'm at the level of complexity you're talking about, people definitely do that and and have it. Uh, I have seen my, my observation has been that folks who are really data scientists who try and take on that level of complexity are like in for a world of pain because it, <laughs> it's quite complex to manage. Yeah, um, and I have just one question about another question about the, the second section. Um, you said that you you will. Um, uh, host uh, on EC2 instance uh, some application. So, do you do you think do you have some comparison between using the container services versus uh, hosting on EC2 instance or or not? Yeah, it's interesting. I I went back and forth on whether to include more on hosting Docker containers. Um, I don't have that right now, but it would not like. It would be totally sensible to take one of those containers from Section Five and be like, okay, if you want, I mean, because you can just put a, a container on an EC2 instance, right, and just like run it there, like that, right? That, that that was sort of the question I was starting with is like, is it interesting to learn how to host a container on an EC2 instance and just like open it up, right, and have the EC2 instance be sort of your like runtime, uh, 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 or is that not really interesting? And like, really, it would be more helpful to learn how to use, you know, something like Elastic Beanstalk or um, it's not ECR, ECR is the registry, what's the other, EC, whatever it is, um, yeah. the, the sort of container runtime thing, right? Like that's, yeah, that, not in there now, but but it wouldn't be hard to add something on that if if that's of, of a high degree of interest. I, I was trying to think of like a better way to say like what I'm hoping for. Mm. And I think it's like when you start something new and you're Googling, there's like a lot of Stack Overflow questions <laughs> asking yeah. the same thing. And then if you get like a little bit more advanced, there's sort of like a drop off in the amount of Stack Overflow questions. And then once you get sufficiently advanced, the number goes back up. Mm. And there's like, a, and it's like trying to fill that like, I know the basics, but I don't really know where to go from here. Yeah. yeah. Where like yeah. some people like they have it figured out, they've got these like crazy questions, and then you're just like, I I can build a Docker container, but I'm not really sure like where do I go from here? <laughs> yeah, okay. And so let me like, let me like let me under like that that that's a great observation. Can you describe a little better for me like what what is this like unsupported middle? Like what 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 would you say are some of the challenges you're facing, right? Like like you say you say you're sort of like, I know how to build a Docker container. I don't know what's next, but like, what are you hoping would be next? What are you hoping to do with that Docker container? What are you, what's your like, what are, what are you wanting that, that you're like, okay, I don't even know where to go from here. It, it might not be that I necessarily don't know where to go, but like, if, if I'm trying to do something new, so like, I'll, I'll go again back to Docker is like, if I wanted to have like, like I have my Docker container, I have our studio in it. And then maybe I have some projects that I'm using RENV. Like, is there a way to package, to keep the packages with the container rather than the project so that I can just send you like, this is like the this project container. And then like, hopefully packages inside won't change. But in my mind, it would be like more stable to have it at the container level. And then like, if I'm trying to integrate so like if I'm looking at the like running a container locally, like I can run our studio, but I'm not really sure if I wanted our studio and my container to inter to work with another service. Am I building another Docker container? Am I packaging multiple things into one? And like some of my home software stack, I have separate containers, and then some people are building all of them in the same container, and like I. I see the value right. in one way or the other, and like, yeah. Wow. Okay, and so just just understand, like, the is the use case here, like, to, you know, like, so so it's so two questions. Like, when you say like another service, like, can you give me some examples of what you're talking about? And, and the other question I'm trying to think, of, like, 
are you thinking about this more from the standpoint of, I want to send this because I'm collaborating with John and I want to send this to John so that he can work on it too. Or are we talking about a deployment use case where you're like, I want to deploy this and I need a mechanism to get it live so that I can share it with, you know, somebody at my company who doesn't know R at all, but wants to use my shiny app or wants to hit the plumber API from a completely unrelated kind of place. I think I may have mismanaged my question. It's more like I, I have this and like, I know I can send it to John and he can work with it or I can send it to someone else in my company and they'll, they might need a little bit of help getting like Docker ready to go. But what are things that I can do with it? So like how, how I guess if I were to ask you like, in your day to day, how are you using Docker containers? Like, if it was like, here's an example, you, like you can run RStudio, and then here's how you would run like this other thing with RStudio. Like, I don't necessarily know what it is yet, but just sort of like say, like a small example of multiple, of like building on it, I guess. Mm. And then that way I sort of have a framework to reference of this is yeah. how I build on a Docker container. Okay. So and it sounds like perhaps, yeah, okay, okay. That that part makes sense to me. So so like let, let's say, right, going back to like in um whatever section, section three, I talk about like architectures, right? And like doing a three-tier app architecture. So you put yeah. right, you separate your shiny app from your plumber API. And so like perhaps an example here might be like, okay how would I do that? Like, how would I actually deploy the three layers separate from each other, right? Like, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Um, okay, that makes sense. Um, okay, I can, I can buy that. Um, and, and sorry, just to, just to go back, um, again, are you thinking about this more from the, what can I deploy? How can I, how can I get it live? Or from the collaboration standpoint of like, I want a way to package up, like I want a way to avoid runs on my machine problems when I'm collaborating on this project with John or whoever. I unfortunately don't have like a great answer for it because at home I'm just building things for myself and then at work. I'm trying to get them to move to Docker, but it's an old company that's sort of like slow. Yeah. Yeah. I think I they think. just they just approved GitHub. So like it's it's and they didn't even approve it for everyone. It was like you need like you it's approved for special permission. So yeah, I know that life. <laughs> yeah, I think what what Gus is uh, talking about, I think it's experimentation use case, like. I want to experiment um, packaging multiple container. That's that's what I was talking about. Uh, like how I set up like an, a shiny app plus um, uh, some kind of database uh, server at the same time with some packages all in one container and try it out. So try in a different environment, uh, playing with um, with the packages and all this kind of stuff. I think this is what he talking about. Yeah, that you pretty much nailed it in many fewer words than it took me. So. I, I would say that I have, um, like I can see both use cases for sure. I came into, into this book looking more for the, I have this, um, you know, I, I need to be a really simple, level of ML ops so people can see a thing and decide what to do next. And so just being able to get to that point easily, quickly, cleanly. Um, but I've also like at, at my former job, I managed a um, our studio instance on EC2 um, that I'm sure was not like, you know, not the best way to do it the way I had it set up. So both, <laughs> I guess, is uh, what I yeah. would really like to see. 
Yeah. Um, the, the, the thing I'm trying, the thing I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with is that like a lot of the primitives are that, right? Like understanding networking, understanding, you know, how to work on the command line, understanding Linux are, are similar. I don't want to write a book on Kubernetes. And if we're talking about yeah. like managing multiple uh, uh, Docker containers, like the right, like there are ways to do it that are sort of hacky, but like the yeah. right answer is Kubernetes. And so then like sort of the answer is we'll go read it. <laughs> Kubernetes and come back and then we'll talk. And so uh, I, I, I got to think more about how we would, how I would recommend somebody does this without writing a book on Kubernetes or referring people to a book on Kubernetes because there's, I don't know. Um, yeah. But I, I do think it is, you know, that's what the, the middle is. is yeah. If we are like really deploying it, then right. we yeah, don't expect fair. to get to that point. But if we want to be able to experiment with yeah. it or or yeah. get you know, maybe yeah maybe, maybe that or, well, the target is like this is not really for real but this will work <laughs> right yeah and it's I, you know it's hard to say how to say that like cleanly and everything but that is definitely the level that um i needed and and then it's something it's kind of like that for something like r for ds um also for some of the companies I'm talking to right now of they don't have anything. Yeah. And so getting, right. um, you know, just a hacked level is all they want right now, you know? Yeah. I mean, to, certainly for, for most purposes, right. Putting three Docker containers on an EC2 instance and making it run will, will work well enough for, for a while at least. Right. So. <laughs> But I don't can know I, what you want to recommend, you know? Can, yeah, yeah, can exactly. I make a quick recommendation as well? Um, perhaps the middle ground here would be just a bit of prose. Like you just write a bit of a story yeah. and just say, here's an example of somebody at a company and their problem is that they're going through this and their managers asked for this and this is how they solved it. Um, this would be the best like DevOps R user way to solve this particular problem. And then you don't really have to go into every single detail, but at least you've given the mm -hmm. reader like yeah, a sort of overview of it. Exactly. Yeah. I like that idea. I never thought I'd be happy to hear a use case for case studies in a book, but <laughs> I think that that nails it is like having the framework of like. Here's, here's an example, here's how it was solved. And then you've in theory provided like the basic steps so that I can now go try and figure out that specific like mm. okay. thing. Okay. Yeah, that, and you that's can really easily just write it in and be like, okay, my, you know, my buck stops here. Like I'm not gonna write about Kubernetes. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah, I guess like even knowing like this is where you should go next. You know, like uh, if you were, if this is an actual, you know, like I think that's part of what the, the last chapter is or the last section rather is um, here's the basics, but we're not going to go into all the details because you're not really, you. at the end of this book, you will not be an enterprise grade uh, DevOps uh, person. You need to work with somebody. Um, but here's enough to get kind of the idea. Um, okay. Yeah, that's that, that's really helpful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I could definitely I could see a chapter um, or a even if it's just sections or something that okay after we finish this section two, here are some other cases that we've basically covered all the pieces of, but these are what you would have to go read to to really do that piece or something like that. So you know we had the specific project idea as we're going through. Uh, chapter two or section two but here's some other projects that are the same you know you're spinning up an ec2 and we've already talked about that or whatever like i, I haven't read section two yet so i don't know exactly what's there but um, yeah so just, just yeah. sort of for your context that I, I think section two is actually pretty i mean i don't know whatever i'm a weirdo <laughs> so you, you're taking saturday to like talk about no <laughs> um but you know so so section two is at this point is basically like stand up an ec2 instance get our Python, our studio server and Jupyter Hub installed, configure a proxy in front of it so that you can access them both at like my server name slash our studio and my server name slash Jupyter. 
set up an SSL certificate and a real domain name so that it's accessible at like a real URL. And that's that's sort of like as far as as far as we get in section two is like sort of getting that all. So like it's robust enough that like if you have a small team and relatively few security concerns, like it should be fine um, is sort of what what section two is is all about. Um, so. Great. So, yeah, and I, yeah, I'm thinking about. Sorry, go ahead. John, I think I interrupted you. Uh, I, I was just saying that sounds great. So. <laughs> Yeah, and, and yeah, I guess I'm, I'm, just, like, I have some parts in there where sort of like, it's like, okay, now that you understand this, like putting up a Shiny app or a Plumber API is like an exercise for the reader, right? Like you, you should have all the tools now. Do you think that's sufficient or do you think it would be helpful to really go through like, here's how you would do this with an, an app or an API or, or, or like, I mean, the, the sort of like mental models are very, very similar. And so do you think it's, it's enough to have gone through this example and be like, well, if you want to put up a, a you know, in addition to our studio and Jupiter hub, if you also want to put up a shiny app at slash shiny, like right. you should have the tools to do that. Go try it and like, have fun. Here are some hints. Uh, hints are good. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't know. I'll have to see as yeah. we go. Um, okay. I'm thinking like, I about did, the, I, I, um, oh, go ahead. As, I was going to say, I'm thinking about the potential um, uh, job seeker sitting mm -hmm. in an interview or like going through their code with a potential employer. Like, I feel like, you know, every, like every sophomore in, in college at this point, like I've said before, like every sophomore in college has an empty cars thing that they did, right? Um but if they wanted to get employed, they have to show an example of something that's not empty cars. So like in this case, like what your book is doing for people um, is that now every, um, every potential applicant is going to say like, I've built a shiny app before and I put it somewhere. That's what would be really good to equip people with. So definitely like, Hit, like strong, strongly hinting, not hand holding the entire way, but strongly hinting at like, here's a good way that you can just like, and maybe you can just like have your own example that's just like sitting on GitHub. You don't even have to put it in the book, kind of thing. Right. right. Yeah. But yeah, here's here's an API that I have deployed using Plumber. It's not enterprise grade. You know, please don't share this with everyone in the world. But you can hit it and see, you know what I did and see my, get an actual result out of it. Yeah. That, but for I the think, purpose of my interview, I built you one like, here. yeah. Right. <laughs> and I did it using this book. Yeah. Cool. That's helpful. That's helpful. I, I was scrolling through chapter nine, which was the networks one <laughs> and sort of going, I really wish I had this like two months ago when I was ripping my hair out, trying <laughs> to learn Nginx and everything. This, but this is a section that I really wish I had, when, when I was um, setting up my own RStudio server for the first time, this is the section that I like, yeah, would have saved my life. Um, so like, I, I was looking through and like, nice. it looks really cool, but there's something, there's like a front end application now that you can use for Nginx that lives in Docker. Hmm. And I think it would be neat if you could be like, Hey, remember that Docker chapter? We can use that, what we've just learned to help set up your network for this. That's like one of the examples that I was trying to like get words for, find words for earlier. <laughs> like here, like you, you've learned these things, like you could put our studio in Docker and you can put, turns out you can put Nginx in Docker and now you can make them work together so that you've got this little network stack that all plays nice together and then it is yeah no um, it does look like there's a fair few like little markdown things right now in that chapter as well that are not rendering as they should yeah like, yeah this, I, I, this, I figured you would get to it like true it's... yeah i need to go back through the section and do some <laughs> editing you've got uh a little while before we get yeah to nine, a few so. weeks right yeah yeah, See, so far, this section, end of February. 
chapter six, but have not um, not revisited any of the other stuff in chapter okay. in section two yet. Yeah, you've got a little bit of a buffer because um, next week we'll just be going over like the intro to to the section two, which is cool. very short, but talking about some of this of uh, like what are we looking to get out of this? Although look at it now, it's it's really short, so maybe I'll merge that into the next chapter. Yeah, I don't it, know. It, it, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to add more to it, but right now it's really pretty minimal. Uh, we'll see. So either we're <laughs> next week we're doing just this, or we might actually read uh, chapter six. But that's you know you we'll we'll take a while. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I think we've given you a lot of uh, food for thought. For yeah, this is great. This is great. And I, you know, I'll be interested to see once we get to the end if we like still think that things are missing or yeah. not. If it, you know, I don't, I can't say whether what you are going to cover is going to be enough um, to get us into doing the plumber deployments in China. I'm hearing a lot, a lot more from from you all. Hearing a lot more interest in Docker and focus on Docker than I mm -hmm. than I have here. Um, I personally, I believe that like, there's a little bit of Docker fetishism right now that is <laughs> like, I don't know. It's fine. People really I, like it. it's, it's Docker. Docker is really nice until you get into the like details and then it gets to be a big headache. Same with Kubernetes. Like yeah. it's interesting because it's like the inverse of working on a plain VM where like working on a plain VM is intimidating from the beginning. And then you get into it and you're like, oh, you just like do it and it's fine. Kubernetes or Docker, you like look at it, you're like, oh my God, it's amazing. It's just a, and then you're like, wait, but like all the, like these details are such a pain in the ass to deal with. <laughs> People often get very far down the Docker Kubernetes route before realizing that they've like totally screwed themselves. But yeah. I mean, that, it, it's a great tool. It's just, it's just like, uh, you know, there, there, there are complexities there that can be <laughs> really a hassle. I, I I do keep on bringing up Docker, and that's mostly just because that's what I know best so far. Mm -hmm. so. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I think from a like I I, I am not um not saying that you all are like <laughs> yeah right like th this is just like a yeah. meme that's out there is like put everything in Docker. I mean, this is something I talk to with our customers all the time who are like, let's just Docker it, and it's like, well, why why are and you then, why right. why like what why do you want to do that? Like, not don't just do it because it's the cool thing to do. Like. But but it, it is it, I mean you know uh, 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 Tanasha to your point like for job seekers right being able to say you know Docker is is important these days right. so uh, don't want to disappoint that either and, and you know being able to um, work on something on your machine and then put it into the cloud and yeah. it is like the same thing there, there um, are some that really is nice very helpful there. yeah um, don't discount <laughs> that and pretend pretending playing pretend that you're on a cluster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So um I I do want to like just kind of quickly to to look at what has changed and see yeah, if right, that right, leads right. to any other questions. Um so yeah, the first thing, you know, you added the portfolio exercises and the this section on mind maps, um, which is uh really nice. And so you know, I wanted to make sure that we all know that this is here and go back and read basically this page. Um, so that that's all that changed in, well, other than some typos and whatnot, that's all that had changed in the the intro. Um, in, what was it? Oh, oh yeah, then the big thing in chapter one is that now there is the portfolio exercise and there's a little bit of, I think the questions changed as well um and so like i said you know so actually maybe next week um in addition to doing the intro section of section two um we can discuss the portfolio exercises that we missed and um i don't know we'll see we'll see what comes up as i'm preparing for next week uh i don't know does anyone have any thoughts or questions about the portfolio ha has anyone done this my website is in Quarto. Nice. Mine is also in Quarto. I started with Gosh. Jekyll. I also started with Jekyll. My, it's like I started there and then when Quarto first like hit the big thing, I was, website, like, yeah, I was, I was like, like, a, like, I'm going to do it. 
and then it slowly gotten out of hand and now it's like hosted through github pages and cloudflare and i have like a bunch of project subdomains and like Ooh. a lot going on there was like a yeah. four week period where the only thing anybody talked about was moving their blogs to quarto mm -hmm. yeah, i haven't done that yet so this is on my list uh so yeah, I, I liked it. It was very funny to see this here as the uh, portfolio exercise because I was like, oh, that's the thing that I was like, oh, I should really update. I mean, like I literally haven't touched my blog in three, three and a half years. Um, it, uh, it's nice. I, I mean, that yeah. might like relative to the difficulty of setting up a R Markdown distill Jekyll thing i i think a quarto site is so easy it's really nice that is nice well, of course then cool. unless you do more complicate it right then it lets you get in trouble yeah. in other ways but <laughs> its version is really nice and easy <laughs> that's what dead link checking websites are for they'll make sure you're yeah. not missing any links and then mm -hmm. that solves most of your problems nice um oh i and i would say um I don't know where it fits into things, but I am finding more and more that I can do things in GitHub Actions that I would would have previously, you know, used a server of some sort for. Right. Um, and so um, I don't know if it comes up like cases of using GitHub Actions it, it, it are really nice. Um, I have, what was the latest? I don't know. I set something up for R4DS recently that was new oh no i set up tidy tuesday to um the all the posts to social media for tidy tuesday are now a github action that runs oh, every monday cool. morning yeah um because the fact that you can you know use github actions for crons basically so it's very nice all right uh chapter two um let's see what did i say changed um oops let's look at the right message um, in chapter two, oh yeah, this section three, step three wasn't uh, done when we first read it. Um, <laughs> and then the questions and portfolio section. Um, uh, so, I, oh, actually this does lead to a side question. Is it RNV or RENV? How do you pronounce it? And Different people have that, you know, that's a per very personal question. Yeah. I, I say RENV, but because that, that makes sense, right? It's like our environments, right? It's yeah. Like our, yeah. Uh, some people say RENV, some people say RENV. <laughs> I know what I, I say. I, I figured you would be like one of the definitive answers. So uh, uh, I would love it if people took my answer, <laughs> but I don't think so. <laughs> It's All also right. it's also GIF and not GIF, but you know I think I'm about as much sway over that as well. So, uh, well, I agree with you on GIF, so I guess it's RN. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Anyway, okay, so that's you know that's what has changed in two, and again, um, uh, right that um. So that yeah, would so be an RN I project. I want to revisit it again, and uh, you can, they're a little sketchy. It's just like, oh, do a yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Like it, I guess there are different levels. Like the, you know, this one has a lot more complexity to it than uh, this one, I guess. Um, and it's more, it is more sketchy. <laughs> oh, that is, that does lead to something though of, um, I don't know. I would be careful about like, it's, it's really nice that they build off of one another, but it also does mean if someone comes in and is just trying to learn one thing yeah. and they didn't read, they didn't use chapter one, they right. might not be able to go on. Then again, maybe that will get them to actually read the whole book. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah I'm, I, I have to decide whether I want to design around that use case or like, right. Be, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's fine if you want to do that just casually like mention chapter one at certain pain points oh like oh like as we learned in chapter one right right yeah just like push them towards it 
that that might be something here to like call out that this was the portfolio exercise in chapter one. Yeah, um, okay. that's helpful. All right, and then uh, oh, that was the other thing in there, and then chapter three. Uh, what did change? Um, oh, you renamed the chapter that it was components, as we can kind of yeah see the remnants of up there. Um, probably change that and break the link. Sorry. Oh, and then the, yeah, the first three sections. So yeah, that's something you changed, uh, and I'm guessing that this is um, just a guess that you're using the visual editor as you're editing these um, because the um, the white space changed. Yeah. And when I was going through the GitHub diff view, I couldn't get it to show me to ignore that basically. Yeah. And so it made it a little hard to see what had changed. Um, just <laughs> like my request would be make sure you stick with the way that things are flowing one way or another because it makes it really hard to see uh what has changed. Uh mm -hmm. you know, I think for section two, you've touched it more recently, so it's more likely not going to have a major change like that, but it was hard to see. Um, I could see that, uh, you know, these sections changed exactly what changed. It was really hard to get to without yeah. digging a little deeper. Um, yeah, just an observation there. But yeah, you did a lot of um, cleanup here that I haven't gone back through and reread, but that it seemed like you had a lot of wording changes, of yeah. significant wording changes. Yeah, a lot of rewriting. Because, yeah. Mostly, um, I mean, I don't think anything conceptual changed, but a lot of okay. writing and, and cleaning and shortening. Okay. Cool. Um, so, yeah, There's and that's... For you all that, that I'm interested in, um, and maybe this is sort of the wrong audience, right? But, like, my goal here is to be mostly language agnostic in this book between R and Python. <laughs> and in my... Um, in the prose, I talk about R and Python sort of, I think, pretty even handedly. In the examples, they're very R heavy because I'm a much better R programmer than Python programmer. And so like, I could write Python examples, but it would take me a lot longer. Right. Uh, I, I don't know if you all have any thoughts or opinions on that, but. Um... I, I mean, personally, I, like exactly the same. Like I'm way, way, way more comfortable in R. And so seeing the example, if there were examples in Python right now, I would probably just, you know, at most skim them. Yeah. Um, I think so, for most of the stuff that yeah. we're doing in this book from my cursory glance is just uh, like the only differences between, the, the major difference between R and Python here is virtual environments. I think that's the most like clear, like, you should probably start from the top with Python to do this because it's very different from Ren. But for everything else, it's like, this is just a syntax thing. Like just learn. That's sort of my take, it. yeah. I, I do wonder if Python people will instinctively recoil at our syntax, but you know, that's a them problem. Oh, at that and packaging. Packaging might be something that, yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I. I think of myself uh, better as Python than R. So, if um, I say uh, I see it as a syntax, just syntax differences. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. It might yeah, be I, interesting. I don't know to have like a, a links to an online resource that at least in this chapter you could do like exactly the same example. Yeah, I mean, now that, now that they're shiny for Python, it would be very, like, I've I've debated yeah. whether I should bother writing some shiny yeah. for Python, just because it wouldn't be terribly hard, but it would it would be more work than just, write, like, right. writing shiny app in R takes me two minutes. <laughs> right. It would be some, it would be, like, a non-trivial amount of work to learn the Python syntax, although the mental model is identical, which is right. nice. I, I don't think I'm going to go as far as to write it in, like, Dash or something, because I'd have to, like, get better at dash also <laughs> but shiny for python would be not a huge lift um yeah i guess the the api piece uh there are other options you know multiple ways that that could be done so yeah I, I, um, you know writing it in fast api or something wouldn't be yeah. too bad yeah because like the point yeah. of this book isn't to like write code necessarily right. this book isn't going to make you a better r programmer 
Therefore, it also shouldn't make you a better Python programmer either. Right. 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 Yeah. To me, it's it's more a question of like legitimacy, right? Like if a Python person looks at this book and they're like, oh, this is for our people, right? right. That's that's not the reaction I want them to have. And so that's more the question for me than, um, you know, what's the goal here? Because the goal I think is very clear and, and I think it will work equally well for R and Python people. The question is more just one of sort of legitimacy um, for folks who who are primarily mm -hmm. Python. Well, if, if examples exist in Python, you know, and they're easy to do for you, like definitely include them. But if they don't, like, I think it's fair to be like, oh, this is um, like you were talking about Dash, for example. Like you can just be like, if you wanted to, you can even put it in the comment in your code block and be like, if you want to do this in Dash, like here's Dash. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I, I, I hadn't thought about it because for me, um, these examples are really clear. I understand what's happening here, but if you're not at all familiar with Shiny um, in R. Yeah, that was the other question is know. just like, how much knowledge of Shiny do I even assume? Uh, but that's that's a different question. I, th I think as long as um, you explain what, what you're trying to show. Um, right. That it, you know, I think that's fine. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and that's yeah. And that's all that has changed because then, um, well, the only changes in four and five are um, suggestions that I made as we were reading it, and so I think we already talked about those basically. Um, otherwise, you had gotten it done before we got to them. So uh, that's it. And then going so going forward, hopefully you'll largely stay ahead of us. Except of course, you know, we will continue to have suggestions as we go. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, that's pretty much our time. But just do you know, do you have anything else uh, that you would like to get out of us while, while no, you have this, this is super <laughs> helpful. And and you know, I mean, I think for me, really feedback on what you're hoping to get out of the book and whether you're getting it or not is is really the most valuable thing thing for me, right? Uh, I think there's, you know, there's a lot I still have to do in terms of making writing easier to read and clearer and better. Um, and, and I still have to add some images and that sort of thing. But, but I think, you know, the question of like, does this, does this match the, the reason I came to this book, right? Am I getting right. out of what I had hoped to? The, whether, you know, the, the answer to that question is really what I would love to hear some of from, from you all. And, and I'm also going to, I, as I said, I haven't had a chance, but, you know, I watched the video of you all reviewing chapter one. And that was just super helpful for me to see like, oh, I did not explain this clearly. Or right. you know, this this part was really good. They really understood what I was getting. <laughs> here. So um, it, that that was just really helpful to be able to to watch that. So thank you. Uh, well, you know, thank you for the book. And I think we'll be able to answer that question about whether we're getting what we need a lot better af after this section. So I think section two is the meat of uh, what brought most of us to the book. Awesome. And, so, and then um, and, and yeah. I'll be really curious then how you feel about section three and whether that feels helpful or like a cop out, right? Or you're like, no, I really needed that part. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, we will see when we get yeah. there. And so, yeah, I will um, stay in touch and let you know when we're getting towards the end. Well, basically let you know where we are. Um, Cool. keep talking yeah, to you about that i'll keep submitting typo two. fixes and stuff Perfect. um and then yeah at the end of section two we'd love to talk to you again and you know do the same sort of thing see how things are going i will yeah. say probably um it feels like it would be pretty useful to do this after we do the like make sure we know what section three is about before we come to the next talk so not do section three but read the intro to section three um yeah and then we'll come in armed meteor than the intro to section two. So there's okay. actually all right. So all right, I will I'll plan for that and then um we will see you in a few months probably and we'll see uh I'll see everyone else uh next week. Awesome. Or actually the Thank week after next. Good to talk. All Have right. a good weekend. Bye. Thank you. Bye.